So we're very honored to welcome Chef Jose, our foundation's first immigrant and first philanthropist as our Herb Block lecturer. And Clarence, we're looking forward to your conversation with Chef Jose. Thank you, I'm looking forward to it too. As you, as you know, uh, I, uh, my, uh, before I left home, my wife, who can, couldn't be, be with us tonight, but she said, be sure to ask him for his paella recipe. And any of you who had it know why. <laughs> it's magnificent. But all those recipes are wonderful, and I believe we have the chef on screen now. Uh, chef Jose, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Excellent. We hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. I, I have to first of all ask uh, why you're in Spain right now. Well, I mean, uh, at the end of August uh, and all of September, uh, the men and women of World Central Kitchen, they've been uh, really busy only in the last uh, 50, 60 days. We began in Haiti, responding to the earthquake. Um, I was uh, very lucky and able to join the teams in a country I call almost uh, a home for me. Uh, I've been in Haiti many times and, and we've been there often. And unfortunately, this earthquake, uh, which was the reason World Central Kitchen was founded in the first place over 11 years ago, we had to respond to another earthquake, this time not in Port Prince, but in the South. Then we follow with the hurricane in New Orleans, in Louisiana, where I was able to join the teams of World Central Kitchen already in place in Louisiana, hours before the hurricane uh, hit um, New Orleans and everywhere else. And then on top of that, we got the Afghan refugee crisis. We got the Haitians in Texas under the bridge crisis. And on top of that, we got a volcano exploding in the beautiful island of La Palma in the Canary Islands, uh, those islands south um, of Spain, off the coast of Africa. Right now, I am on my second trip to La Palma. I had to come here, as you know. I love to be uh, an immigrant in America. I love America, who has given me so much, including my wife and my three daughters. But also I know where I came from and that country is Spain. So we've been doing here uh, a very good, I would say, support to this island of 80,000 people where more than 10, 15,000 people has already lost their homes because the lava that is coming out of this brand new volcano, the, the volcano that gave life to this island is the same volcano that is taking life away from this island. This is kind of the moment we live in this life, right? Where it's always the yin and yang. So long story short, I'm in La Palma right now, helping my teams keep feeding the people that they are losing their lives, their properties, but also their farming land beyond, et cetera, et cetera. Well, thank you for doing it. We are all, all very grateful for your work and uh, I have been uh, watching you with a great deal of admiration. Uh, so I must uh, begin in typical journalistic fashion with a, a quote from someone uh, who I can't speak for now, but was not one of your great admirers at the time, evidently, uh, a, a well-known commentator named Ann Coulter. Uh, and I um, uh, was, uh, you remember back in December, of 20, yes, the audience is laughing here right now. <laughs> what, what pandemic audience we have. Uh, back in December of 2020, uh, she tweeted uh, on a Tuesday, a quote, some nut foreigner was just on MSNBC demanding that Biden appoint a food czar to solve the national hunger crisis. A dozen federal food programs is not enough. And Chef Andre, bless your heart, you responded <laughs> with another tweet. I'm so proud you called me a nut. Nuts are fruits where the ovary walls become hard so I can be protector of my people and everyone else. Nuts like me, energy dense, nutrient rich, what we need to feed the USA. Nuts, you right girl. Foreigners like almonds and pistachios, happy holidays. <laughs> Let me say, yes, our, well, our, uh, little, our little audience here is <laughs> applauding, I assure you. 
<laughs> Multitudes at home are joining in. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? I mean, I understand who you are, my friend. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to be sarcastic <laughs> because I do believe sarcasm can create a better world. I do believe sarcasm, sarcasm is what we all need to, to sometimes the people that disagree with us, to send them a message that, listen, <laughs> we highly don't agree with you, but I'm not gonna be insulting you. I'm gonna try not to disrespect you. I'm gonna for sure try not to insult you. I'm only gonna try to find the right moment to tell you that maybe you are wrong. You know, I, I wish I will be face to face with Ann Coulter. And I wish one day I will tell Ann Coulter that maybe she's totally wrong. I would love to tell Ann Coulter that she was able to feed herself and her family because those same immigrants at times she sends negative message all across America in her very powerful platform. If Ann Coulter herself and her followers were feeding her families, it's probably because undocumented immigrants so much she seems to hate were the ones picking up every single piece of cabbage, every carrot. They were the ones transporting the food. They were the ones refilling the shelves in the supermarkets. They, want, they were the ones delivering the food to her door when she order through Uber. And I'm very sure they were the same ones were cleaning her garden, were cleaning her house and beyond. So if Ann Coulter wants to be sarcastic, I want to be next to her. But the truth is that the life that Ann Coulter is living is thanks to those men and women, shadows in the night making sure that America is the greatest country in the world. What is very unfair is that she's trying to make this moment, I am smarter than you. We don't need immigrants. Immigrants are the problem and we don't need you. And America will be less safe without them. And Walter, if you're listening to me right now, you went through this entire pandemic, thanks to very often undocumented immigrants or immigrants like me being right there in the front lines, making sure that people like you were taken care of. So, dear Uncultor, yes, I am a Nat. I endorse Nats. And I wish that the next president of the United States, including this president, Joe Biden, I don't care if he's Republican or Democrat, will be a Nat that believe that immigration reform is the right thing for America to do, is not a problem for America to solve, it's an opportunity for America to seize. I am Jose Andres and I do endorse this message. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I hope you can hear the applause that brought out here. <laughs> I, uh, in all fairness, I must throw in a, another quote from a colleague of mine, a Republican commentator, Anna Navarro Cardenas. Uh, she too tweeted, and she said, his name is Chef Jose Andres. He's helped feed millions of Americans and people across the world in times of need after disasters. He's a small business owner, entrepreneur, who employs thousands through his restaurants. Oh, and he's an American citizen who makes our country great, unquote. With that, Chef, I want to ask you, you came to uh, the U.S., uh, what was it, was it, was it 1991, uh, to New York, and uh, I, you also came down to Washington. Uh, what, what is America to you? America to me is home. America, America to me is the country that gave me big opportunities. America is a country that showed me that immigrants like me, we are welcome and we can be part of the solution. America to me is this place where first time I came was not in 1991, but actually 1990. I was a Spanish sailor 
in the Spanish Navy in a tall ship, a tall ship called Juan Sebastián del Cano, the person that ended the circumnavigation of planet Earth after, after Magellan passed away through the trip. That time in the Spanish Navy showed me the meaning of a team, showed me that 300 people working together against the winds, against the currents, against the ocean, if we work together as one, that's a matter of what color of our skin, our accent, our political views, our religion, that the 300 people together work against anything, we could always sell to the right port. That ship is the same one that took me to Pensacola, the one of the cities that celebrates the five flags. One of them, the Spanish Castilian flag. That moment I said, I belong here. But that's the same ship that took me to New York. In New York, next to Ellis Island, next to Lady Liberty. On the night before we docked in Manhattan, in New York Harbor, I thought for a second looking at the night sky of beautiful America, that those white stars I was seeing in the blue dark sky, they were sending me a message of, I belong here. I am welcome here. That anybody that wants to be part of America can be part of America. If you do respect America and you want to give the same way America will always give you back more. I'm not very, you know, <laughs> I should not be sharing that, but I didn't know about the states. I didn't know that the stars in the flag represented every state in America. I swear to God, I thought the stars meant the same beautiful dark blue sky where a young boy like me dream of being part of America, where if I work hard, they will welcome me with open arms. I will be able to give little bit back because I know America will always give back to me even more. This is the America I know. This is America I want. And I know this is the America we all love. So for me, this was my arrival to America, my belonging to America, I've been here almost 30 years. I have three American-born daughters, which I love, which um, immigrants like me, we only show one thing, that we are riches. We are riches that we show everybody, that nobody should be afraid of the people, as I said before, that don't look like you, don't speak like you, don't have your same political views or religion that actually immigrants like me, we enrich everywhere else we go in the same way we want America to enrich everyone else. At the end of the day, my people, we can be talking about walls, but you know what I wanna be talking about? I wanna be talking about longer tables. Immigrants like me, we believe in one thing. And I know this is the vast majority of America, which by the way, we need to speak louder. Longer tables will win the day over higher walls. Why? I can put my three American-born daughters behind walls. Let me tell you, if I want to protect my three daughters, it's not behind a wall. If I want to deliver to my daughters a better future, a better America, is when people like me, people like you, we will work to provide for our daughters and sons the same thing everybody else is fighting for. So. Let's bring down the walls. Let's bring longer tables. Let's make sure that this good for me must be good for others. And this way we will build a better America. And I do sincerely believe we will build a better world. Thank Boom. You.
Thank you so much, Jeff. I, I, uh, I, we're all out, out of time, so you, you must help me apologize to my wife for not getting a chance to ask you for your paella recipe. That was, <laughs> she, she made me pause. Okay, but ask me quickly, the, the, <laughs> and I give, her, I give her my email, and I get paella recipe to every one of you, and I'm Great. inviting you to my home in Washington, in Bethesda, in Maryland, with you and your wife and some of your friends, to cook a paella together <laughs> where we can build a better America by building longer tables. So you already got my invitation and my wife Thank to join me in my home to cook together this paella. Thank you, I'll get that email to you and this audience got a lot of hands up. We all wanna, <laughs> all wanna come to Bethesda tonight. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you, sir. And Godspeed. Take care of all, all, all those folks. You've got a, a big mission. Thank you for taking it on. Hey, don't call me sir. Call me Jose. Come on, man. Okay, I mean, sir. Really? <laughs> I mean, don't be so sarcastic. I'm Jose. No way, Jose, you call me sir. You got it, Jose. Thank you. Thank Love you very you. much. Ladies and gentlemen, and thank you Chef for your Jose legacy, Andres. <laughs> thank you.